Alrighty, hey there folks, welcome to another Run 8 Train Simulator video. While we had quite a bit of train simming news yesterday, one of them being another iteration of Train Sim World, this time the fourth, um, we also had the release of this, the Run 8 Train Sim Pittsburgh Line East. Now, it's kind of funny that it was named that. That would only lead me in the community, of course, to believe that there would be a Western section. Uh, of course, we'll go over that uh, a bit more because there's some odds and ends here that, you know, would lead some to believe that it's actually going to continue East. So, who knows? Uh, anyway, you know, this, this hasn't been a, a big secret, uh, you know, the, the files for this have been within Run 8 that people have been able to dig around and figure out for quite some time now. And, uh, but it, you know, it finally released, uh, yesterday. What was it? The, uh, 22nd of August, 2023. So we finally have some home rails for the haunts, the Press and Pony, um, Norfolk Southern, obviously. So now we've got, you know, the Southeast, uh, CSX. We have Selkirk Mohawk, of course. So we've pretty much got everybody's main line. We've got uh, some UP and BNSF stuff, uh, you know, Northern California, Southern California, and then, of course, the Southeast, now Norfolk Southern. Uh, so we're really just missing, you know, Canadian Pacific and Canadian National, essentially, if we ever get anything like that. But uh, anyway, we are in Pennsylvania, and uh, we're going to take a look around, of course, hop around, see some trains in action, all that good stuff. But this is going to be $40, so it's the usual price for Run 8 uh, stuff. But the thing is, some people were a bit peeved about this. It's only 60 miles. It is the same, pretty much the same old uh, Altoona to uh, Johnstown. Um, you know, that, that Train Sim World uh, 2 was a couple years ago. And then, of course, the, uh, the very nicely updated Train Sim Classic uh, Pittsburgh line. So it's kind of the same trackage. So I feel like this is the third time uh, I've personally covered this route uh, in a matter of just a few years here. But, of course, Run 8, you know, is all about the trains. Some, you know, some nice scenery here and there. Uh, but it's mainly about trains, train action, trains, physics, industries, and all that good stuff. Whereas Train Sim World, you know, it's just glitz, shiny things, ooh, ah. But, you know, largely things do not feel good to run in Train Sim World. And then Train Sim Classic is a bit older. Um, not really older than this, per se. But uh, it's, you know, Train Sim World is kind of a bit of both worlds. Whereas this is more oriented to trains, of course. But this is going to cover quite a bit. Like I said, uh, about 60 miles. It's going to have Rose Yard, Woodvale Yard, uh, the Connemaw and Black Lake Railroad at uh, Johnstown, which is actually where this train left from a moment ago, right near there. It's going to have the Yard J. Corman bit at Crescent, uh, although that line is not going to go all the way up. Uh, it's going to have the Nittany and Bald Eagle Railroad at Altoona, which is actually north of Altoona. It's, uh, it's up there at uh, Tyrone. Uh, you're going to have some Amtrak Ops, uh, 45 Industries, uh, and there was also update 10 that came out along with the pushing of this route as well. So we're on the Run 8 store now, of course, and it'll note at the top that there's a new update, uh, update number 10, where uh, I looked it over a bit. Uh, I'll, of course, leave it up to you to check out the PDF if you want to see all the the uh, behind the scenes stuff going on with it. I didn't notice anything uh, too, um, I don't want to say worthwhile, but nothing uh, big of sorts, uh, if you will. They did fix some EOT issues, uh, obviously into train device uh, with the rear of the train. Uh, there was something going on with that bug that has uh, purportedly been fixed, uh, but you will need to, regardless of getting the latest update or not, you'll probably need to go ahead and get this 10th patch here, uh, or update 10, if you will. So now, uh, I did not cover this because I haven't, I honestly haven't touched Run 8 in some some months, uh, at least until uh, after this, this uh, automatic patch or updater came out, which is actually kind of neat. So... You download this new uh, 
uh, updater app, which is right here, actually. Click on that, download it. You're going to um, pull the EXE out of that, and then you're going to uh, put that within your file structure where you have your Run8 V3 EXE uh, executable. Um, and then you're going to run it within there. And what it'll do is automatically uh, update everything within Run8 that needs to be updated. Uh, so you don't have to go to the site, download something. You know, it takes up a lot of space, a lot of these these installs and, and downloads of patches and all that. Um, so that's one thing that's pretty neat. I would recommend taking a look at the instructions as it notes there. Uh, but anyway, that's about patch 10 and the updater. Of course, if you go to Roots, you'll see right here on the left-hand side, actually... Yeah, that's not going to work. Highlighting it. There it is. Run 8 Norfolk Southern Pittsburgh Sub East. $40. Uh, tells you everything that it's going to include. Uh, yada, yada. But, of course, this is where you find it. And then, of course, you want to purchase it. You just click that and follow the instructions. Of course, there is a, a bunch of data, uh, train data, trains that run over the uh, Pittsburgh line, which, of course, is a very busy line. Uh, you know, and... As true to Run8 style, all the data, all the information uh, you need is here. And please, someone correct me if I am incorrect, but I think this, the the route is set uh, like pre-2020. I want to say uh, maybe like 2015 or a bit earlier, and I'll get into that a bit more later. But uh, this is one of the first documents that you'll see here, which of course... You know, shows you everything you need to know about the trains, the types of trains. There is Amtrak that runs over the line. There's, uh, I think, three Amtrak stations, Tyrone, Altoona, and Johnstown. Uh, tells you all about the manifest, eastbound and westbound. Uh, of course, you got your intermodal trains, which by today's standards is a huge deal with uh, the uh, Pittsburgh line. You've got domestic and intermodal, uh, mainly going between Chicago and uh, the New York City greater area. Call trains, of course, loaded going east, empties going back west. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Uh, oil trains as well. That's another big one. Um, ethanol, a few ethanol trains. Then you got your locals helpers uh, where they predominantly are with the, you know, within the line. Um, so that's that's one of the documents. It tells you all you need to know about the types of train that, that uh, run over this. You've got your track diagram as well, which uh, this is a, a nice document. I always like when these are included. It tells you all about, uh, you know, the bits and bobs of the line. This is the legend uh, as far as, you know, industry tracks, defect detectors, uh, rail lube, tunnel transfer tables, all that good stuff. Transfer table, that's that's something cool. We'll get into that in a moment. Uh, and then it shows you the, the track layout, essentially. Everything you need to know. Uh, you know, your mile post, uh, the towns, uh, where specific yards are, all of that is included within the uh, documentation. It's easy to find, easy to pull up and get you uh, exactly what you need to know. But that's all listed in there as well. Here's something else that was pretty neat that was included. So it shows you, uh, and again, this is stuff that's not traditionally in other train simulators uh, that, that that kind of want to do the same thing. Anyway, it shows you the essential layout of the route, although it says not to scale. That's largely what it looks like. Uh, it shows you where the line ends, starts, what's in between, and it shows the actual grade and uh, the milepost of the grade. Uh, now, call me a ding-dong. I very much am on occasion. What in the hell does Benny mean? Right between Galitzin and MG Tower. It's almost to the crest. I have no clue what that means. I know a little bit about the area, uh, as with a lot of areas, but not nearly enough. I mean, I know there's a ton of, you know, Pennsylvania, uh, you know, rail fans and all that within Run 8 and, you know, other train sims, of course, as well. So I have no clue what Benny means. Um, yeah, so if any of you know, please do let me know. Something else that's pretty cool about this is you've got your Conrail. The big blue, the big corn. You've got your Conrail train symbols, which were weird as hell. I do not understand CR, you know, trains. <laughs> you know, it kind of explains it here. So if you're going to run some Conrail, which you very, very much could do. Uh, I think it was in, maybe this is supposed to be in like that transitional era. It's, it's hard for me to tell. But uh, J. 
judging by the signaling, which we'll, you know, see here shortly, um, you know, that, that kind of alluded me to, to think uh, the era or circa that, that it's supposed to be. But it tells you all about the uh, Amtrak's back in those days. Uh, eastbound, you know, hot piggies or trail vans. Um, let's see what else we got here. Manifests. Uh, yeah, just so it tells you about the uh, the Conrail signals. I still fully don't understand it. Stuff like this I have to read like 15 times over for it to kind of sink in. But uh, if you want to, if you want to run some Conrail stuff, you very much can. What's neat about it as well is the the developer have included three separate uh, worlds, so uh, sim worlds within the game, right? So the first one is kind of like a mix, if I understand something that you can build your own world upon. The second one is uh, Conrail Big Blue days, and then the third one is more modern uh, Norfolk Southern days. So one of the big key commodities over this line, the Pittsburgh line uh, in the corridor was coal. I don't know if it still is, honestly. Like a lot of things, coal has kind of dwindled a little bit. So like I said, that's this also kind of leads me to believe that it's like, you know, pre-2020, but maybe post-2000 for the most part. Uh, but it tells you all about the coal trains and the symbols for said coal trains, where they're going, where you're taking them. Uh, and whatnot. All right, so here we are. We are at the farthest eastern bit of this new map. Uh, I believe essentially facing Harrisburg down yonder to the east there. Uh, this is where it ends. Now, you can see here, obviously, where the trains go as they continue on. Uh, but this is where it ends. I'll go ahead and show you the map or dispatch screen, which uh, I love the, uh, the, the uh, logos down there, Conrail, Norfolk Southern. Um, but it's, it's fairly easy to understand. I feel like this is probably one of the most, uh, more understandable, at least to me, dispatch screens. There's really only, I think one channel in one tone. I think it's 46, 46, uh, for the most part. Um, trying to look over it real quick here. Uh, but essentially, obviously the bottom right is where we're currently at. So it's Tyrone going to the east to Harrisburg. And then uh, up top and to the left is Johnstown and going to Pittsburgh. Uh, I'm going to try and keep this under two hours. I know some of these videos tend to stretch on and on and on and on. Uh, so we'll just kind of hop around. There are some interesting things that were done here uh, versus like some other uh, iterations in train sims, like train some classic, train some world, some things that were reserved and some things that were expanded. So we'll try and go over those a bit as well. So to kind of start off, um, you know, for those that may not know about the Pittsburgh line, of course, this is basically Norfolk Southern's primary east-west line and is heavily trafficked with uh, intermodal. Uh, um, it's, it's kind of part of between the Pittsburgh and Harris divisions within Norfolk Southern and part of the Keystone Corridor, or is the Keystone Corridor, which is kind of joint operated between Amtrak and Norfolk Southern as there are Amtrak trains that run through here. Uh, but the whole line itself, not in Run 8, uh, but in you know real life, runs between Harrisburg and Pittsburgh, crossing, of course, the Allegheny Mountains, which you know is what this bit's all about. It's the Horseshoe Curve. Uh, you know, crossed in, crossing the Eastern Divide uh, and all that. But um, it's it's home, of course, to the Glitz and Tunnels, Horseshoe Curve, uh, Crescent, 
uh, Altoona, of course, Johnstown, uh, South Fork, so on and so on and so on. And it's it's I think it still has the moniker to this day that it's Norfolk Southern's busiest line. Still, 70 trains per day. That's that's quite a bit uh, East Coast wise. We're up to 70 trains per day. Anyway, but again, it's the primary connector of intermodal, which is huge nowadays, obviously, between like FedEx, UPS, uh, all the other shippers. Uh, and they are generally the hottest trains through here, if I'm not mistaken, still. Uh, they get priority for the most part, um, you know, for intermodal between New York City and Chicago, back and forth, so on and so forth. Uh, it, largely, the eastern slope of the grade, which, you know, kind of what Horseshoe Curve is all about, is the curve itself, essentially is I think on average about 1.8%. If I'm not mistaken as well, I think they still do use uh, helpers, which are generally M2s. Um, so yeah, it's just a little bit about uh, the line, or this area, not the line so much, but just the area, the immediate area. All right, so let's, uh, let's start hopping around here. Okay, so our first kind of true port of call for hopping around the map is of course the little hamlet or uh, suburb kind of Altoona, to be honest, called Tyrone. Now, <laughs> I thought it was kind of funny being named Tyrone, but it's actually uh, named after Tyrone County in Ireland. Um, you know, if, if that many means anything at all. But uh, it was it was a huge center of industry uh, in the turn of the 20th century um, for the uh, the coal fields in the area. Uh, there's a big paper company as well, but it sits on the Norfolk Southern Main Line. So the Norfolk Southern Main Line goes to Harrisburg, goes around that way, of course. That is an Amtrak station there. Uh, let's see to the left. This is the American Eagle uh, paper mill right up there. You can kind of see the stacks there. Um, but the, the little railroad that runs this is the NBER, uh, which is the uh, Nittany Bald Eagle Railroad short line. Uh, operational since about 1984, formerly a branch of the Penzi. Um, and, uh, yeah, we'll just go look down there. This is actually Interstate 99 right here, which kind of runs north and south to the area. Uh, you will notice a lot of the assets are reused as stuff generally is in Run 8, sadly, except for some of the high rail stuff. Some of the high rail stuff is, is definitely unique, uh, in that sense. Um, this station looks new like you can kind of tell sometimes when things look new uh these lamps i think were taken from some of the high rail stuff that uh the that the guys over at high rail simulations the only run eight third party devs made i i remember those lamps uh and you can tell they're new as well i don't recall this building unless it's like a hodgepodge of a couple buildings stuck together uh which it may be you don't see a sign or anything on it you do have a uh, Amtrak board and placard there, um, you know, but it, it looks nice enough. It may not be 100% one-to-one, but with Run 8, that's always kind of the give and take, you know, with, with the train operation and the scenery sometimes. It's, you know, it's always going to more lead uh, on the operational side. So this is kind of, these tracks down here, the, uh, the interchange between the NBER and Norfolk Southern. That's pretty much the end of the line for NBER. Uh, this is the, I think this is the little Juniata River right here that runs uh, through the whole area there. Um, down, I think it runs down through Holidaysburg as well, south of Altoona. But uh, this area through here is pretty neat because it does a little street running, which it does uh, IRL. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so here it is. Uh, again, it's not one-to-one -one from pictures I've seen of this stuff, but it's pretty darn close for a run eight. Uh, and it's always interesting doing a little street running as well. We'll zoom on down here. You do have a couple of industries. So that's what I'm all about, per se. I'm not always, you know, Mr. A to B as far as train runs. I like working industries, doing local stuff like that. Um, you can see whistleboards in place. Crossings, yeah. So these are the the high rail simulation signals as well. So you can you can definitely tell that a lot of high rail stuff for the southeastern content uh, was used in this as well. It should be a whistle board, indeed it is. And you come on down here, and this is the American Eagle Paper Mill and Superior Lumber Company is down there. So it's two um, industries that are very much here in real life. I don't know about a lumber company down there still being rail served, but this is most definitely still rail served here, which you can work. Um, 
this is like a little creek right here. I think it's actually called the the Bald Eagle Creek or Eagle Creek or something like that. But largely, this this industry here looks, uh, you know, as it should. Um, it's not as big as far as like building an asset wise compared to the real thing, but it's laid out roughly the same. I'd say about ninety percent. Uh, some kind of little trucking company right there. And then this up here is the uh, Superior Lumber Company. Uh, so you can run stuff to and fro there. And then the NBER uh, short line essentially runs up here, and then it kind of stops. So that is part of some, some little short line ops you could run for sure, you know, getting the lumber company and the paper mill, which are kind of hand-in-hand paper products, wood, obviously. And then interchange them, of course, with uh, Norfolk Southern. But uh, let's go ahead and go over some of the geography and scenery, topography, if you will. I think it looks pretty darn good. I've never been to, you know, Pennsylvania, but from stuff that I've seen, videos, photos, whatever else, you know, the hills look pretty good. They have that kind of, that soft kind of sloping look to them, uh, like uh, Pennsylvania has in the Alleghenies. You know, it looks pretty nice. It's, it's fairly scenic. I feel like the same kind of thing... Uh, with this goes along with the Roseville sub or the Northern California route that came out for run eight not too long ago. Uh, that looked pretty damn good as well, if I'm honest, scenery wise. Um, yeah, but this is the area that way again goes to Harrisburg's the end of the end of the line. There's actually several miles that go through here, uh, which is some very scenic running. It's it's a lot more narrow. This right here is a huge lime pit. Um, in real life, there's no, uh, you know, industry here, obviously, or anything to really see. But, you know, at least he kind of uh, cleared that out so you can tell it's some sort of pit. Uh, it crosses the river there again. And it pretty much follows the river. It's pretty scenic through here. And then the dead end is Skablamo right there. All right, so let's go ahead and go back to Altoona. We are now just east of uh, Altoona, of course, where we were just a moment ago. It was right behind us there, the opposite direction. But Altoona obviously was established by the Pennsylvania Railroad in uh, about the mid-1800s um, and is home and largely built uh, you know, to what Altoona is today. And Norfolk Southern as a whole, really, uh, because of this, this heavy machinery locomotive works that was built here and still lasts to this day. I mean, God, how, how old is it now? 100, 100, 150. Well, I don't know exactly when the buildings were built and all that, but some was almost getting close to 200 years old. That's that's crazy. That's that's almost like if you think back to uh, you know something in the UK and in, in England, like the Doncaster Works, for example, or something like that. Same kind of same kind of vibe, but massive shops, home to the Juniata Works, of course. Uh, the most modern, as they claim, uh, most modern heavy repair facility for locomotives for Norfolk Southern and abroad. There's a couple little private companies in there that do work as well uh, for Norfolk Southern and others. Uh, but anyway, this this is the outside um, yard right here headed east. Uh, so this little facility right here, this yard, I think is for uh, the car shop or car repair shop, which there's like an open car repair shop up here. Uh, as you can see, there's, this is just the, one of the worlds that, uh, comes with the map that I loaded in here. Um, this, that is the eighth street bridge right there, which is where the crew change is for the most part. But this is a uh, open air shops here. Uh, it looks, it looks pretty darn faithful to, to in real life as you know, as far as detail goes, um, you know, it's a, uh, it's a little car repair shop. I don't see any, like, Norfolk Southern signs over here, sadly. They do have a sign in real life, like, right here by the road, I think, or it's over here. So it would have been cool to see something like that, kind of like they have with the Southeastern CSX stuff from High Rail. Just little little bits and bobs like that always, always certainly help. Um, and then you get up to the 8th Street, or 8th Avenue, something 8th. And this is where crew changes happen. This is uh, Rose Yard. I don't know why they call it Rose Yard. I, you know, I feel like it used to be called Altoona Yard, and it's now called Rose Yard. For whatever reason, I don't really understand. Most of the trains do crew changes right here. Um, I believe uh, you'll see them load up. Uh, even in the game, I've been right here, and there's been five of these bastards load up at one time and uh, take off. So the Norfolk Southern Shop or or yard office or whatever is right here in real life at this bridge 
And for whatever reason, nothing was placed here. Uh, that, I, I'm not very fond of that. I think that was kind of a mistake. Um, you know, this is Altoona. It's, it's sort of like, uh, I don't want to say the Mecca for Norfolk Southern, but it kind of is, this, this area. So things like that, I feel like should most definitely have been there. Uh, I don't know if it's just my game. For some reason, an asset didn't install or load, uh, but everything else I've been playing seems to run, you know, pretty smooth with everything else loaded. So I don't know what's going on there. There should be a Norfolk Southern office here, and there's not. You know, I feel like there's a million buildings that could have been used because it's not like it's the Taj Mahal. It's nothing fancy, really. Um, so why there's nothing there, I don't know. Uh, now, the Rose Yard can get pretty busy with trains coming and going but by and large i think it's mainly just for locals stuff being transferred or ran down into the holidaysburg branch uh and that's just about it it's it, i don't think it's a a very um busy yard so to speak so uh let's see and here we have <laughs> i'm sorry to laugh but here we have the uh the juniata shops um it's another one of those things where, like, the layout is all legit. This looks good, right? But as far as the building and the asset, I really feel like the guys at Run 8 Studios could have just had someone make, you know, if they are going to make a couple of fresh assets for this route, this 100% should have been the top of the list. A gigantic brick building. I mean, this, this is, like, the number one place for the route kind of besides this and the curve obviously in the tunnels you know the the big three if you will this is it's kind of a big deal and and for that you know to have been uh oversight or whatever you know i don't know it's it's not like they rushed this stuff out i mean this has been in the works for years and years and years if i'm not mistaken so you know, I feel like just a big brick building should have been made. I mean, I, I, I know it's not the easiest thing in the world to make assets and import them and all that. Um, but if anything was going to be done, I really, really feel like it should have been done here. Uh, there's obviously not near enough tracks as there are in real life. Um, you know, but it's, it's still laid out okay. It still looks okay. Uh, there's also a bunch of houses and stuff missing back here. Uh, I swear there's houses like right here behind this uh behind a turntable here in the road uh or there used to be anyway um but yeah i just, I just feel like this area should have had a bit more care um yeah i'm i'm just kind of confused about this so of course you can turn back and look to the east there and see the the gentle rolling hills or mountains as well those look really good i'm i'm actually really impressed with the topography uh, and the altitude and all that. The stuff looks pretty good. You can see some radio towers out there, microwave, microwave towers. Uh, and then you've got a bunch of other stuff. I honestly, I have no friggin' clue what, you know, 90% of these shops are at uh, Altoona, at uh, Juniata. There's so many buildings here. Uh, it is insane. This facility is massive. And again, it looks you know, close enough. It certainly looks close enough. Um, I feel like there are some buildings and just some, some, uh, I won't say garbage or trash, but just like little, little knickknack type things, you know, more laying around on the right side of, of the screen here, what we're looking at, like back in the facility, uh, and a couple more buildings. I feel like some stuff is missing, but, um, anyway, the, so the, the, the Juniata works, the shop here, the main shop that, you know, I feel like should look 100% more like this here. This just old kind of brick style. Uh, it just really stinks, man. I really wish that there would have been like an actual, um, you know, brand new asset for that. But it is, it is what it is. It's, it's not the end of the world. Uh, you know, I, I don't know what else much more to say about it, um, you know, but. But that's just how it is. Uh, we'll keep on scooting this way. So up here is something that's pretty neat. So this is the uh, the Union, I think it's called Union Tank Car Company, uh, labeled as UTLX. Uh, this place is pretty neat. It's most definitely here in real life. They uh, they service uh, and and fix tank cars and stuff like that. And uh, it's a very cool looking place. So there's a transfer table here which is cool as well. I don't know if a transfer table has been 
uh, put in run eight before. Um, but you can actually see the table here, which is pretty neat. Goes back and forth. Got your little track mobile here, of course, if you've got your track mobile installed. So that's pretty darn neat. Uh, I would imagine a lot of work goes in and out of the uh, the tank uh, facility here, the tank car facility. So you can do some stuff there. There goes uh, probably eastbound ethanol there. With some helpers on the back. Uh, let's see. What else do we got? So Piggly Wiggly. So we got some more high rail simulations assets, obviously. Uh, we'll scooch on down this way into the town. We'll go ahead and take a look at one of the signals. I do like the uh, the abundance of um, infrastructure, the bungalows, um, you know, circuit boxes, all that crap seems uh, alive and present along this route where a lot of the stuff should be. Uh, but some of the signals are interesting. So it's like a mix. These are like the um, the Vaders. You've got some collar position. Uh, the um, yeah, 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 yeah. The uh, like Penzi style, uh, and another one like the uh, what are they? The triangle type. Um, you know, but they look good as well. Uh, they look pretty proper, I guess, for whatever era they're trying to go to between transitional, transitional before all the, uh, the color positions were removed. And I think they were right guys. All the, uh, all the color positional have been removed along the line now. Um, I, I think they have. Anyway, here's another, uh, pretty good size industry in the Altoona area. So this is Altoona pipe and steel. Uh, designated, of course, by the APS. So I've got the industry tags on, by the way. So that's right, control F8 off and on. We'll leave it on just so we can see what's what. Um, but it's a, a steel distribution and fabricator and rail car repair right here as well. So, uh, you know, this is kind of a big thing in the area. It does pretty much look like this. That's, that's fairly one-to-one. -one. It looks nice. And one big other glaring kind of thing you'll notice over here is no railroaders memorial museum um you know uh, largely i think a lot of it's got to do with the just lacking of assets within run eight to to use for stuff like that you can see the gantry here um you know that is legit <laughs> but that's really the only thing there i'm i would only assume even though sometimes you know what assume stands for i don't have to say it i would largely assume that we're going to see this touched up at some point. I hope, anyway, for some stuff to be added. Um, so, yeah, it just looks weird being blank there when, uh, you know, we, we know darn good and well what the heck is there. So, this is obviously downtown Altooner. This is the Amtrak station with the walkways that go over the rail rod. Uh, you know, the, the building set up again look okay you know it's it's definitely missing like the big church that's back there which uh you know is definitely profound in the in the skyline of altoona looking to the west um so things like that i definitely would have liked to have seen as well just just a few new assets made you know just just to spice things up a little bit we got some more signals down here we'll see if there's any new stuff back it up a little bit alto tower of course so alto tower is uh present and accounted for of course it does not look a hundred percent like alto tower it's largely the same shape uh it does not have the name on there of course alto tower was built in like 1915 by the pennsylvania railroad and closed uh back in like 2012 uh so it, it no longer did its interlocking duties uh, anymore, but that leads us to our next uh, port of call before we continue on to the curve down yonder is uh, Holidaysburg, so this was kind of neat. I was interested uh, When I saw this when I first cracked this open yesterday Because uh, train some classic doesn't have Holidaysburg and certainly train some world doesn't have Holidaysburg in in its form of uh, You know train sim, so that's pretty cool um, You can see the scanners here Leading out onto the main line there. Uh, you got a, you know, several crossings. There's not going to be a lot of level crossings on this route. Obviously, Horseshoe Curve, there's a couple. Uh, but back in here, you most definitely do have some level crossings. Uh, this, you know, this looks largely legit as well. Um, realistically, 
Uh, let's see. Let's keep on scooting down here. There are a few industries down here that uh, can be worked. I think one of the first ones is... Uh, see, this one's not labeled. So I guess you could kind of make that whatever the heck you wanted type of deal. Uh, here we go. 84 lumber. So here's a big one. Um, you know, 84 lumbers all over the country. Uh, that's a big one down here on the Holidaysburg branch. We'll keep on scooching yonder. So there's actually a few uh, gaseous storage facilities down here as well. And I'm a bit confused as to what's what. Um, even with the label, like this says CB, I know there's a huge one down here in real life called Luck. It's got the weirdest name. It's called Lucknow High Spire. <laughs> it's like somebody just grabbed a couple of random words and just threw them together. Uh, but it's a big uh, storage facility for the area, which is like a fuel wholesaler. Um, I would I would be led to believe it kind of looks like this one by the way it's shaped and the size of the tanks. Um, but there's actually another one down here. You can see some old has-been facilities there. I like the use of the old buildings. Uh, here we go. This could be it as well. But uh, the real luck now, High Spire has... Um, like, for example, this building, that's what's so strange. So this building, you know, looks like a rail car shed, right? If this is luck now, it should be right here because they actually push rail cars into the shed so it's covered. Um, so I'm not, I'm not totally sure which one's supposed to be which, but nonetheless, several industries you can run down there. You can see some old buildings uh, being taken apart and scrapped out, which, you know, this area was massive with industry, uh, you know, the last uh, century or so, and is surely and slowly dwindling and a shadow of its former self, uh, in industrial-wise anyway. But uh, it's a nice little scenic line down here. This is, uh, of course, you know, sometimes things look a bit funny from the air, but this is about simulating train operations, obviously. This is about the highest you're ever going to be and, and what you're going to see uh, is down here. I think that is... I think that's that might be the interstate there. The uh, underpassage of the tracks. Uh, this is the little little bit of a creek. Uh, it's kind of funny looking. It, it doesn't look this large in real life, so... Um, yeah, it is what it is, though. Uh, let's see. Let's get on down here. And here it is. Here's the... Holidaysburg town uh, with the uh, the triangle or the Y. So historically, Holidaysburg got its start, and it was kind of known for the transfer point between the Pennsylvania Canal and Portage Railroad. Uh, so it, of course, quickly spread the area, uh, its citizens, industry, um, all that good stuff. But now the uh, the Everett Railroad runs this little bit of trackage here, pretty much everything through here, which is, of course, a short line in Heritage Railroad, so they do passenger excursions. And uh, I remember, I feel like I saw a video one time of one of their Heritage uh, steamers pulling revenue freight, which was pretty damn cool, if I'm honest. But uh, it's operating on ex-Pennsylvania uh, Railroad trackage, obviously. Uh, and they were operational, I want to say, since like the 1950s to present. Pretty sure they're still going to this day. But, um, yeah, this is the triangle here. It literally dead ends here in real life as well. Uh, but I think, like, as far as scenery here in Run 8, there is... I feel like the interstate runs through here. Could be totally wrong. So that, that would have been nice to see that there. Uh, but the tracks themselves actually dead end here. It looks like just a little office and uh, storage area. We'll go further down here, which is the actual yard. Yeah, I believe the rail yard uh, and the office to the yard is right down here. Is the uh, operational office. Some nice urban running. This is, uh, I, I like the way this looks through here. This kind of, you know, back in time feel. A little bit older. Runs, you know, right between all these uh, businesses and homes and whatnot. So this looks pretty good. Uh, something else I quickly like to mention overall is I feel like the ballast and the tracking is a bit too light uh, compared to what this kind of looks like in real life. I feel like the color 
is correct balance wise and and the regional aspect of it, it i just feel like it could have been a little bit darker um but again that's kind of samey same with with a lot of the other stuff balance wise you can see some uh whistle boards some bing bongs guarding the crossing got that same creek right here which uh, i believe is the same creek we passed out there on the uh, branch line coming in and this is kind of the main yard here um you know where they'll they'll have storage hold cars so on and so forth this is their station and office and yeah buddy it says to hatchapi that kind of sucks if i'm honest again um as, like i would have almost rather had a more generic building here if i'm completely honest than something that says to hatchapi or uh or hell even just put put another asset like right here so it blocks the sign because like once you see it you can't unsee it type of thing but uh you know reusing of assets and run eight is uh is pretty much how it is sadly hopefully we'll start getting some some newer models and things like that but time will only tell of course further east it doesn't go much further down here maybe another couple miles uh, this is like a huge mineral manufacturer uh, industry or plant. There's actually several. Uh, while the buildings in Run 8 do not represent the, the breadth and the expanse of what it looks like in real life, again, it's largely laid out realistically in how it is. Um, geez, I'm trying to think of some of the companies. I know they do like some mineral stuff. There's, uh, there's a curry Rail service to the north, you can actually see it there, denoted in the CRS as well. So there's a lot of stuff you can do back here. You got your little track mobile down there. Uh, quite a bit going on here. Curry Rail Service is just another one of those, uh, you know, car car service repair shops. Uh, big company, um, you know, company that that has done pretty well for themselves. Uh, they got a little storage yard back there. It dead ends there as it does in real life. And it's laid out pretty faithfully. This place looks almost tit for tat of what the uh, the real place looks like. Uh, then we'll go back out here. And then this kind of dead ends down here. It's just a ton of storage. But uh, you can tell Everett uh, has got some work with uh, with this place down here. So it'd be neat to see some, uh, you know, maybe some, some reskin Jeeps or something like that to be used down in here. Or better yet... Boy, oh boy, what I love to see just uh just a I don't know, any kind of old switch or an SW9, a 1500, anything in run eight. That would be uh I would love the hell out of that so so much. We need a switcher in this so 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 bad. But uh this is Holidaysburg. Again, this is all, you know, totally new to uh train sim. This was not in um, you know, and I'm not talking trains or open rails. I don't really mess with those too so i'm always going to refer to like train some world or train some classic for example but uh first time this area has been represented and it's fairly scenic as well we are marching our way westward over to the horseshoe curve um and this is what a another kind of big thing along with like the juniata shops you know not being present as far as like a new model is the rocks while i do appreciate this newer you know, kind of smoother rock, which this might also be from uh, High Rail Simulations as well. It certainly looks better than some of the older stuff, but it's just the color. The color doesn't quite match these rocks. What, what is it back in here? Like sandstone or something like that? It just, it just doesn't quite match. In real life, it's a lot darker. It's like a, it's like a very brownish we'll just leave it at that this is super um super light and uh whitish and here we go guys this is uh a, a rail fan mecca obviously for the area this is the famed horseshoe curve again uh very scenic 2300 foot portion of track um opened about 1830 somewhere in there there's also currently a park down in here and a little uh, funicular, a fun funicular, which is sort of like a sort of like an elevator, but it goes more sideways than up. Uh, it's the best way I can describe it for those that may not be aware. But uh, it goes down from the parking lot to the top, um, you know, a nice memorable area that was built here. 
This is the Altoona uh, Reservoir here and the kind of chain of reservoirs that go down in there. That looks pretty nice. Um, the, the river or the canal bit that goes through here could have been finished, uh, fleshed out a little bit more. That is definitely not very good looking the way that, that drain or whatever that is that leaks out onto there. Uh, and then you can see these, um, kind of poking out as well. As far as I understand, it does not look like this unless, unless there's a ton of trees that cover this area realistically. I'm pretty sure these these tunnels don't kind of jet out like that that far. Um, so that looks a bit funky coming around. Uh, the area itself, the little park in the building, again, reused assets, I think. Yeah, what, is, what building is this? I, I'm pretty sure the actual uh, museum and office doesn't look like this. This is definitely a newer building. That's a nice looking building there. That might, I don't know, staircase. I'm sure the staircase was painstakingly recreated with, you know, this fencing and the steps. Like, that couldn't, that must have been a pain in the ass to make. But it was made for the most part. It may be a little uh, kind of funky looking, um, you know, the more you look at it. But you're not really going to be looking at stuff like that in your frames. And he even went as far as trying to make the funicular, the little, uh, little kind of tram that runs you up to the top of the grade there with this, uh, you know, this, this kind of rebar stuff or whatever the heck that is, that metal framing. And then you get up here and this is the, the exit of the, uh, funicular into the top. And again, like this, this looks pretty nice here. What he did with this, there's some weird stuff going on with that. It looks like it's spinning. What the hell? That would be Z fighting, I'm assuming. It's like one of the few phrases I know in any any kind of uh, development for stuff. And <laughs> that's funky. But the shape of it looks pretty good. That's all right. The building is well. But one of the biggest things you'll notice is ba bam. No GP9. Harsh, bro. Very harsh. Um it stinks. You know, I get it. We don't have we don't have a GP nine in uh, in run eight, so that just means we need a certain someone to make a GP nine. Intent, cough, cough, wink, wink. Yeah, that would be great because it looks kind of weird just being sat there like that um, with nothing there. That's like an integral part of this. Not only that. But it's very devoid of trees, I notice. There's a couple of very large trees right here at this park. So again, I don't really understand some of the design aspects here. Uh, you do have that little bunker over here, which is kind of cool, even though it doesn't look, you know, 100% one-to-one. And again, the rock face, while it's, it's very steep, uh, it's a very steep incline, it's shaped fairly well. Again, the color, you know, I just feel like it's just... It could be uh, a bit darker. Um, but overall, the, the shape infrastructure-wise of this area seems seems pretty legit. Uh, it's just some of the, uh, the scenery aspects, naturally. Okay, ah, you see here, this color of these rocks, this is more what I'm trying to describe. Is uh, this, would, this would be a lot more natural, how these rocks look uh, all through here. Uh, it's nice seeing the mixture. But this more this looks like a looks looks like marble or something. Um, very very light for the area. But we are not far from the old MG Tower. We are getting up there. Here's some of the older um, color position signals, the PRR stuff. I think Conrail will use them as well, right? Uh, so there are some of these still present on the line. Um, so, you know, I think these were all torn down. So that would lead me to believe this is this is pre, you know, 2020, 2019, if you will. Um, I'm, I'm not really certain on that. But there is a mixture, which is kind of cool. We'll go down here. The old MG Tower. Now they did make that. That is very cool. It's a nice looking asset. Nice looking model. They obviously had to make that or have someone make it. 
and it looks damn good. That is a nice representation of what the MG Tower is. Uh, for those that may not be aware of what the MG Tower, what these towers are overall, they are interlocking towers to control traffic. So in the 40s, uh, during World War II, you know, industries and, and transportation just exploded like a 50 million kiloton bomb. I don't know. Bad analogy. It exploded. Traffic got out of control. They needed a way to keep the flow of trains going uh, through this area over the top. And uh, so they started building uh, a couple of these interlocking towers. This, of course, being probably the most famous on the, this bit of the Pittsburgh line. Anyway, the MG Tower. MG, by the way, stands for mid-grade. Uh, so that being that it's, it's, I wouldn't say it's about halfway. It's probably about 30% of the way between the curve or where the, well, not the curve, actually, where, where the incline starts just passing uh, several miles west out of Altoona to the tippy top at uh, Galitzin. Um, so it's midway up the grade. But uh, this thing, geez, I, I, I think it's still there. It's kind of hard to tell. It's one of those areas that you can't get to in real life. I mean, train crews go by it. If you're on, you know, if you're on like a Keystone Amtrak service, you go by, you might be able to see it. It is in very bad disrepair. It has been. It would be a damn shame to see these things all completely go. Uh, but it's just how these mega corporations are now. But uh, it's a very good looking model. I do like seeing that. It's just a shame that we couldn't have gotten... Um, you know, more of that. But uh, anyway, what this thing did was uh, operate these crossovers. So you see all these crossovers here. So if something was being clogged or backed up, uh, it, 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 it physically, manually operated uh, the crossovers uh, halfway up the grade. So I think we got some more of the uh, color position. Yeah, th we do. Uh, we'll keep on going this way. So that's nice. Do like seeing that. Again, the overall scenery and the mountains do look pretty darn good through here. So just for wiener schnitzels and giggles, I threw on what it looks like in winter through here. A hundred percent, in my opinion, any of the train sims that that look good in winter, this is it to me. Train sim classic looks bad winter. 
Train some world especially looks bad in the winter. This looks pretty good. It does look kind of funky seeing the trees still green um, for the most part, but overall snow on the ground looks pretty good. The way it builds up over the you know the the ties up up to the tippy top of the uh, the iron, uh, it does look good. It still has that weird kind of effect where you see the the lines or the grids in the uh, the sections of Lord above, what is it, the tiling, I think, um, you know, so that kind of stinks here, I feel like you don't see it as bad, because it's not as uh, elevated as like the, the Roseville sub, Northern California, it just came out recently for run eight, but uh, anyway, so that's what it looks like, it does, you know, it does look pretty good in, uh, in this, we'll go ahead and change it back here, we'll do, uh, I think I had it in October, eh? There we go. We're back to normalness. So this is the Galitzin Tunnels. There's actually two. So there's the new portage. The new portage tunnel is the higher side, the higher singular line over to the left. Uh, the OG Galitzin is over here to the right. Um, again, I feel like this is one of those short-sighted things where, you know, there's a few big things, a few big deals about this line, the horseshoe curve area in this line. And I, I feel like there were... You know, definitely, I don't know if it was rushing or whatever the hell, but, you know, this is one of them. Uh, so this bit, you know, the actual tunnel, um, the, the concrete or brick or whatever, should have extended a bit more to the right. And then the old blocked tunnel uh, should have been present as well, but it is not, sadly. But uh, these are the, the two tunnels, essentially. Um, you know, the one was raised for, for higher double stack. Uh, intermodal traffic eventually um, actually wait the main what is that the Allegheny Tunnel or the Glitzen Tunnel they call it both the, I got three names going on here but uh, the this is basically the tippy top of the grade uh, the town of Glitzen uh, so we'll go on through and uh, check out the town Okie doke guys so we are now on the western side of the double track mainline bit Allegheny uh, tunnel there. This this does look largely pretty legit, pretty good. This exit of the tunnel I feel like looks a lot better than the eastern slope side. Uh, this over here is the Galitzin Tunnel Rail Park um, up here. It kind of looks legit, um, and it's it's funny. It's it's funny what he did here. So so we don't have cabooses, right? So he made. <laughs> This the little uh, Folkestone stand like a like a what's the word a little mishmash going on here of assets uh, to make it look like the caboose that sits here. I'm pretty sure it's a uh, I don't know the model, but it's a PRR caboose that sits here. So so the shape is right. Uh, better yet, if they had taken the time to paint the thing red and black, you know, somehow uh, that would have been even cooler. But this is the rail park, of course. This is. I mean, that's what's so cool about the Horseshoe Curve. I would love to get up here one day. Um, there's just so many places to see some action that's that's easily accessible, you know? I mean, hell, even right here in real life, you've got cutouts in the fence so you can just see better, stick your camera through, be, you know, not impeded by the, uh, the screen, if you will. But uh, anyway, Town of Galitzin, right at the tippy top. Uh, let's see. Let's go over this way. Over here is the single line that comes through nor the new portage tunnel. Ah, it looks okay on that side. This up here does not look good. That would have been nice to have that covered up a bit more with some foliage. Got some more of the new modern, uh, what are these, safe trans baiters. Um, this down here is the AR tower. So this, again, I have no clue, guys. Please, by all means, if you do know 100%, let us know in the comments. Is this thing still standing? Um, you know, again, it's another one that's, that's not used, but uh, it sat on the portage line, which is the line we're on, and it's the tower at the top of the grade, essentially, west of the new portage tunnel. So this is uh, a, a big area where helper engines would turn you know, turn back, go back down grade, down the eastern slope, uh, so on and so forth. Uh, Norfolk Southern does or did use this little area here for some maintenance away. 
uh, you know, they set some cars out here, ballast, all that good stuff, or just turn engines right around if necessary. Um, so that's that side. I did totally glaze over this. I don't know what these industries are, but I'm pretty sure they are here realistically. Uh, there's one there. The track's literally dead end just like that. And this, I guess this is here as well. Looks like some sort of uh, some uh, paper type manufacturing there. Some Maybe some drywall or something like that. But uh, let us continue on down to, uh, oh, let's take a look at these. I do like seeing these. Those are cool. Ooh, did that just change? We might actually have a train coming. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Where's that? I'll turn the Amtrak. That's not it. Um, Allegheny Tunnel. Yeah, we got... Um, eh, it's pretty, pretty good size. 66T? I have no clue what that is. So we'll see that coming in just a minute. But I do like seeing these old school lights. And uh, we'll continue on down to Crescent. This, of course, is where the tracks kind of merge back up. Awesome camera work. Sorry, guys. Kind of merge back into one another here. Over here, you've got some more Norfolk Southern. It's either, it's, I think it's Norfolk Southern. This might even be RJ Corman. Some more maintenance type stuff that's over here. I don't believe this is an industry. This here is a line that uh, I'm pretty sure this is one of the RJ Corman lines. It runs out. Uh, they got they got quite a bit of trackage in this area, and interchanges right here at Crescent with Norfolk Southern. But this dead ends shortly. Yeah, there it is, right there. So we'll go back to Crescent here. And zoop on down. Of course, there is another rail park right Norfolk here. Southern milepost oh. two five three point one track two. There's our uh, double D. So sadly, guys, that is not the default defect detector sound for this line. That is a enhancement, uh, which sounds really, really nice, might I add. The default defect detector sound is not that great. Uh, it's it just sounds kind of weird, um, you know. So, so thankfully, there's the uh, option to change that. Anyway, the Crescent Rail Park again is present and accounted for. Um, realistically, I, I feel like it needs to be a little bit more this way. It's kind of like right in the middle of this, this, uh, wire, the triangle there, but again, it's missing the caboose. There is a caboose here. You got a couple of little platforms. You got the, uh, rail, rail fan platform sitting there in the town of Crescent. that goes all the way down and throughout. Um, uh, but this is uh Norfolk Southern helper station. Um, you know, fill up all that good stuff. Uh, Norfolk Southern. They did. I don't. I don't know if they still do, but they would. They would man helper crews or a pair or a unit, which were two engines generally, all up and down this area for the most part. This is kind of like the base, the helper base, if you will. Which is another thing that makes this area interesting is the helper operations. Even to this day, trains still need helpers for the most part, which is pretty cool. But uh, down here is the. I think this is the R J Corman yard, uh, which again is a a private company that. Um, that runs, uh, you know, trains, locomotives. Been around for a while. Very profitable. Many, many states. Um, I think, and this goes. So this is the this is the R J Corman line. This goes up to Mahaffrey, up to the north, which is a, a fairly scenic little bit of track, as well that they operate mainly coal, if my memory um, serves me right, but it does not go very far little industry there a couple of crossings there's another one and another one where does this go some bitch I didn't realize it went this far hot dog okay cool very cool RJ Corman um, that looks like open face coal right there Hell yeah, dude. I didn't realize that was there. I kind of did a, a little look-see beforehand. I think this continues up to Mahaffrey. It's quite a ways away as well. So that's pretty darn neat. So we need some of them sexy uh, red and silver R.J. Corman locomotives that they never, man, if, if they see a bird shit on the hood, they'll get out with a bottle of Windex and clean it off. They keep them things clean as hell. But uh, R.J. Corman, of course, private railroad operating in like 22 states. Uh, and they'll do an interchange here with Norfolk Southern. 
um, you know, they'll pull up, grab the cars, take them, do whatever they got to do with them. But uh, Crescent, Crescent's another one of those interesting towns that uh, it, it got its start in early 1800s. I want to say a lot of your big uh, industry titans like Carnegie, I think Carnegie and the Schwab uh, had summer homes here or vacation homes anyway. So it was a, a very hootie duty um, type area, but uh, it got its start with lumber, coal, coke, uh, and of course the growth from the old Portage Railroad, which is uh, which was that singular line that went through the mountain. Um, but yeah, that's uh, that's that's Crescent. Here we go. We got ourselves in a little platform here at the Crescent Rail Park. That is, uh, what was it, 66 T? Heading eastbound, charging up the slope. going to assume there's an EMD on the back. We need some M2s, man. We desperately need some Dash 9s, even though they're all in the process of getting rebuilt for the most part at Juniata, of all places. Uh, but we need some M2s. M2s is the, uh, the current helper fleet. That's one of each. And yes, those uh, Florida East Coast engines are very, very lost. Better uh, send them on their way. Here, of course, we've got Carney's Crossing, a very famous place in this area on this bit of the Pittsburgh line, of course, uh, especially for rail fans. Um, but it looks pretty good. Looks fairly faithful. Tout is, again, I've never been there, but from photos and videos I've seen. Uh, it's got to be something to see uh, trains hauling ass through here, sometimes catching a meet of, uh, you know, three of them, a trio, um, you know, because it's pretty much wide open up here until they get a little bit further out of Crescent. But uh, cool area for sure. We'll get down ground level here, hit the F12 key. Garney's Crossing. Got another famous little joint here. Um, the name eludes me. I want to say Miranda. <laughs> Isn't that not Miranda? Cassandra. Got it. Nailed it. Cassandra Overlook. Uh, this this little bridge overlook here. Again, for rail fanning. It's, this is like a rail fan's mecca. There's, there's so many places that were kind of built and made for people to do exactly that. Uh, to be able to stay to the side, stay safe, all that, whatnot. Uh, but it's fairly rocky through here. Uh, so they've got these, the name of these things elude me again, but it's got some some wiring in here to keep trees and rocks and all that from falling through here because this is most definitely a cut uh, where the name alludes to uh, the line was cut through a, a mountainside or a rock face, so on and so forth. So that uh, that looks pretty faithfully recreated. Again, these rocks, these are the colors of the rocks, man. I, I don't understand why up around the Horseshoe Curve area, um, you know, rocks were not this color. I get they're older, they're more low res, but they are definitely uh, a bit more appropriate to the area. So the uh, Cassandra Overlook and the, um, the, we'll call it the Gulch. A little bit farther to the west, we've got the Rosebud Mine. This is just outside of Portage. We'll turn around and take a peek. This is back on the main line. 
Uh, the gulch is right up there. You can actually see it. So the the Rosebud Mining Company is is fairly large in this area. I don't want to say large, but this isn't the only place. Um, it is most definitely here. Pretty certain they still use it to this day. See a lot of cars rolling back through there. And then if you go around to the other side, this comes back out onto the main couple of storage tracks, this little town here. And there we go. Yeah, so this is the main line there. That goes on to Johnstown now. Looks like the skies are clearing up a little bit uh, cloud-wise. But uh, Portage, another one of those towns that was this is all about the canal and the railroad. So, you know, it basically got its start with the Allegheny Portage Railroad in 1834, like a lot of these areas. Um, and it was essentially the original pass over the divide. So before the tunnels were open, Horseshoe Curve was that way, obviously. Modernity, the old pass, was that way, continued on that way. And, of course, by the time the Pennsy, Pennsylvania Railroad came through, built their line, got the pass done, it was more efficient, safer, easier to operate trains. This line here quickly became uh, redundant. So it's, it's pretty much dead. You got the, uh, the coal mine back there. Um, and uh, the little Connemaw River should be around here as well, which goes down to Johnstown. But one thing I did notice about this area as well, they may have been torn down by now, but if this route is supposed to be back like uh, between 2010 and 2020 or whatever, there are some buildings right here, some like large industrial type buildings. So it looks a bit funny being bare. You know, some of these decisions within this, the making of this route and how long this thing has been made or in the works being made, you know, some of these things just make me think, did they forget? Did they intentionally do this? Uh, it's, it's a bit confusing, honestly, but, um, now they may have been torn down, but, uh, as of several years ago, there was some, some large warehouse type facilities right here in the Y of the, uh, the portage in the, uh, pit main line there. Here is South Fork, another very notable place, especially historically down here. And that's the Little Connemaw River there to the left and the South Fork off to the right, which, of course, it's named uh, South Fork. So this line uh, is still in operation. There is a very uh, predominant coal mine down that way. And not to mention the line that goes through there is cool as hell. It goes through a couple little towns, uber scenic. Uh, and it's got some grade back in there as well. But sadly, it was not added. Um, that's as far as it goes. Uh, that's a shame. That's, that's a darn shame. Uh, it would have been nice to be able to go back in there. So down in there, the line dead ends at Rosebud uh, Mining Pit. There's actually a lower line as well that goes down... Um, down in elevation, like super steep. It's crazy. Uh, that's down there as well. It's part of the company. I believe it's part of the same company, but it's a shame that it, it didn't go that far. So, I mean, one of the things that you can do here, caveat, uh, so this yard looks pretty good. This is, you know, where they pick up the coal trains and, and, and bring empty tubs uh, to go down in there. But... Um, yeah, this is South Fork. I feel like that kind of stinks. Even Train Sim World got got that line. You know, I don't play a whole lot of Train Sim World, but when when the Norfolk Southern uh, Pittsburgh line or Horseshoe Curve came out for Train Sim World, that's probably the the most that I did was run down the South Fork branch there to that coal mine, just because it you know it was the most interesting to me. But um, Anyway, the town, of course, was named for the confluence of the Little Connemaw and the South Fork, or the Southern Fork of the river. And, uh, yeah, it's just, it doesn't have the branch. The, the the yard looks pretty good. You can still do quite a bit of operation out of here. You just, you're not going to be going down to the mine and loading up. You're going to, you're going to be taking um, full loads out of here and heading east or, you know, bringing, bringing empties back in. Uh, kind of stinks. I feel like that would have, that would have uh, stepped up the uh, this this map within Run Eight a bit, you know, a little little bit more was uh, and the South Fork branch.
One thing that is neat, although, is the little dam, uh, the old dam or facility here on the little Connemaw. There's a spillway there. Uh, that was added. That's that's pretty neat. I like that. That's definitely a line side and, and something you would see traversing the line realistically. This is looking uh, east, by the way. Okay, so we're kind of uh, East Connemaw looking towards Johnstown, essentially the end of the route. Uh, so the the four tracks is obviously the main line, the pit line, uh, and then the track opposite the river is the Connemaw and Black Lake Railroad, which is another short line that runs some of that. So there's some of that that can be done. Again, we don't really have the engines for that visually uh and probably physically as well but it's something you can do and the industries are there we will continue on from here it's neat how tracks uh run both sides there as well it's kind of cool you can see some of the old industries being torn down so johnstown was like the little pittsburgh uh it was a hugely industrial town um you know, it, it was originally a key transfer point of the Penn Mainline Canal, again, like everything around here, uh, which soon became redundant with the uh, completion of the, the Penzi Line, the Pittsburgh Railroad Line, which is the line here to the right we're looking at today. Uh, I mean, this town was all iron, coal, steel, quickly became a major player, um, you know, with within all those different types of industries. You had just giants like Bethlehem, uh, Cambria, uh, several other manufacturers that were just huge and distributed from here. And uh, there's quite a bit of railroad traffic back in its heyday. But um, anyway, let's take a look at it. The beginning of the yard here. We're in Norfolk Southern. Couple of the uh, the so the highways, the bridges, like the bridge, bridges look nice, okay for the most part. But it was odd that you know roads weren't really completed. Now again, for the sake of argument and technicality, when you're down here, you're not going to see the road. But uh, you know, it be what it be. Uh, I believe this might be a transfer point for that uh, Black Lake Railroad. There are a couple industries back here. A little tiny yard. This is actually, I'm pretty certain this is part of the Norfolk Southern Yard right there. You can tell it goes over there, so you can definitely interchange across the uh, the split in the river. Here's pretty much the main yard here, which again doesn't really see a whole lot um, in modernity back in its heyday. Hell to the yeah, it did. Would have been pretty busy. I do like the choice of uh, adding all the the older you know, reused assets and buildings of, of how things would have looked back in those days. Um, so that's nice. Uh, so this, this area is, you know, it's known for floods, washouts. This town had, I think, three historical, very bad floods in its time. And uh, so the river was built as such uh, with the concrete walls here, which, might I add, look pretty darn good. I like the way this looks. Um, realistically, I don't think they have the ribbed portions like what you see here, but when we're talking like looking at, uh, you know, this iteration versus train some world or train some classic, this one wins for me hand down, uh, actually both hands down. We'll do both plural. So that does look pretty good. See a Connemaw river running through there up here, BSM Bethlehem steel manufacturer. Um, so that's what this is. This this facility actually looks pretty darn good with some of these. Uh, I'm pretty sure these are older buildings. They gotta be. Um, you know, it's I as an entity, I think the name is still a thing legally, but uh, manufacturing wise, I don't think it is. There is um, realistically in modernity like today, there is a company back in here now. Uh, Jeez, I'm trying to think of the name. Oy, 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 oy. Yeah, so there's there's still something that works out of here, like one of these one of these sheds back in here. But this this was one of the key players right here, Bethlehem Steel. You know, pretty much anybody that's into rail fanning or trains North America, you hear Bethlehem Steel, you you pretty much know what it is right away. You can see some cars stuck in there as well. So it very much is serviceable. 
So what's interesting about this, though, is this is not Norfolk Southern. This is actually Crash Smash Explode, a.k.a. CSX, that runs through here. So you can see the line goes under, and right above us right now, that is the Pittsburgh line, and this runs up that way. So we'll go back to the south. This um, actually connects to... Uh, the Keystone sub, Sand Patch Grade, as it's known, which is uh, down to the south, not too, too far from here, uh, which is pretty nice. But it's a former B&O route. I forget the name of it. It's got uh, it's just like two names, but former B&O trackage. Uh, pretty, pretty certain it's still CSX, but it runs uh, where Rockwood, so the Rockwood um, interchange up there, uh, up the Sand Patch Grade, so that would be to the south of where we're currently at. So that comes up from here. So it'd be kind of cool to see that in run eight as well, uh, if I'm honest. See some little keystone action. Uh, big Sandy, if you will, um, down there. You could definitely interconnect the two. That'd be needed. You know, one be Norfolk Southern, the other be CSX. That'd be pretty damn cool. So anyway, there's a small yard here. There's a like a gas facility. I'm not sure what the heck they do in real life, but this place is definitely here right now realistically um i think there's another yard here here's kind of the, the main yard for the area here and it doesn't go too much farther and that's that's that so you could technically run a bit of csx through here if you wanted to um you know they they got the scenery pretty good through here as well the little the little uh peak of the mountaintop over there um down here is a park where the uh the rivers uh converge or confluence so in reality there's a little park right here it's a good spot to watch trains come over the river there uh again it's one of those things that you know maybe throwing like a concrete fill in there to make it look more like a park and not the trees but uh you know it is what it is i hear a train amtrak sweetness keystoner but, uh, yeah, so those run through here as well. Of course, the Amtrak station is right over here, and it is itty-bitty. You actually come up from uh, underground on this thing. But uh, the rendition of it looks okay. This actually looks fairly realistic. Um, it's weird how the, the actual, like, sign piece keeps going and going like that instead of just being in the middle there. But uh, it's actually, so street level is, like, down here, and you go in, and then you go under the tracks and then you would come up uh right there so this isn't the station per se it's just part of the platform uh there's more stuff up here for the csx bit J jfw what the heck is jfw i have no idea but again there are some metal fabrications and steel works you know still to this day down through here uh, this right here is the old uh, Cambria facility, um, which uh, was a you know a, another large player in this area. I you know like the way it's set up. It looks legit as far as the old facility. I think it's a uh, sort of like a museum now. They have a like a like a steel workers kind of school or something right there. I think that is rail served. They do have a little uh, spur going in there, and then there's something else back in here. It looks like some sort of scrapper. Uh, and then the CSX line pretty much stops right up here. Does it hop back across the river? I guess not. I thought it did. Oh, yeah, it does. Right here. Right here. There's another little industry back in here. You could work. Um, yeah, and the line keeps going and going and going. And uh, pretty much stops right about here. So uh, you can obviously see where trains come and go, um, you know, but it's like as far as the way th the map is so far built, it's kind of hard to tell, you know, but you would think with this being called pit line east that they would build uh, the westerly portion. That's pretty much going to do it, guys. I tried to make it as short as possible. This being the third time that I've kind of covered the Pittsburgh line for any any train simulator. Uh, I think that's enough for anybody, honestly. But, um, 
yeah, there's a lot of good here. So it's busy. This is a very, very busy line. So this world that I've loaded in here that I'm currently looking around in is not that busy per se, but I've loaded in the, the modern Norfolk Southern uh, world, and it's pretty damn busy. It's just nonstop trains, trains, trains. That being said, uh, you know, pricing. Pricing is largely the same. Um, you know, credit where credit's due with a lot of companies and their BS inflation thing and jacking prices up, they've, you know, over at Run 8 Studios have largely stayed the same pricing-wise. But that being said, it's only about 60 miles here. Yes, you've got a couple of branch lines. It is very busy. Um, but th this is like a fraction of what a lot of the routes are that, that come out for you know, run eight. So, you know, kind of, kind of plus and minuses, uh, all there. It's neat seeing the transfer table at the tank facility. You got the short lines. That's a plus a minus is the no GP nine at the curve. Uh, no trees there. It just doesn't quite look uh horseshoe curve parky. Um, you know, it's neat. This got some of the safe trans and PRR signals mixed throughout and the, uh, the three light target style, uh, there's some three light target styles somewhere on here. I didn't find them, but I did see them before uh, recording this. So there's actually three different sets. Uh, it's neat because you can do some Conrail. So finally, some somewhere to truly run Conrail. Of course, you could run it Selkirk Mohawk as well. Uh, but there's a ton of reused assets. I feel like there should have been some some new assets that would have definitely helped a lot. Uh, another thing that I'm not so thrilled about was the the color of the rocks and the ballast overall. It just, you know, I feel like it should have been a lot more dark. Um, let's see, the Juniata shop asset, like that, I feel like that should have been a number one thing. Kicking a dead horse about it here. But uh, it the way it's set up, it looks similar, but just a big damn brick building. That's all we needed, you know. Hell, I'd have, I'd have taken a course on a, you know, asset modeling and done it myself uh <laughs> which i don't know how long something like that would take i'm sure it's not as easy you know easier said than done that whole thing but it would have been cool to see that um you know didn't have the south fork line running down to the rosewood mine which is a, a cool uh run it's very strenuous um you know grade wise and it's scenic as hell and runs through a couple towns um but the holidaysburg branch is there so it's you know, this is a this is one of those maps for run eight that's like I'd say I don't want to say mid, but I'd say about average. Um, you know, there's there's a lot of good, but there's a lot of not so good either that definitely could have been better. Uh, it just it kind of seems like it was rushed or like some things were stepped over. I'm I'm not totally sure, but it's not bad. Uh, not in any regard. I've I've ran some train here and there. I do intend to run a train. I'll try and get a video up of, of the entire thing as a whole, just to show you know the the, the busyness and the operations and all that. But uh, as of now, that is it. Kind of the first look video of the Pittsburgh Line East. Um, hope you found it informative. I'll see you next time, guys. Take care. Bye.